All right, what is going on, guys? Um, there's just a little bit of a issue with my second test uh, save. Uh, this commentary will be done after my recording. Um, unfortunately, the uh, when I was recording this game, it the um, cricket captain decided to just randomly crash a few times, and uh, it was a bit of an annoyance to stop start recording. So. Uh, when I was doing commentary, so this one will be just pre-recorded stuff. Um, I'll try and do my best to sort of fill you in on what is happening here, but um, yeah, unfortunately, this will have some pre-recorded stuff, basically after recording um, commentary, uh, which is probably okay. Um, you're only going to see uh, uh, the scorecard and whatnot, so it's not like it's going to be hard to do But you will see in the video that it just cuts um, I do apologize that it's not a fully live feed um, But it is coming up probably in the next 20 seconds It just uh, unfortunately cuts and you'll see there was like an there'll be a few overs or um, like a few minutes lost, but oh well, there's not much we can do but um, yeah, hopefully though you guys have enjoyed this series so far, um, I have noticed that we are getting some, I want to say not, not high views, but we have been getting some views that I probably wouldn't get with other series and it's quite good to see that we are getting, um, some views for this series because I do like my cricket, um, it's not and considering cricket is in a bit of a odd position in this current uh, world at the moment, um, it, it is always good to go into these games. And I know that there's, there's some issues with cricket captain, but I do really like the simulation aspect and, you know, building a team up. I, I really do like that with cricket. And I do wish a lot of other sports have that, specifically um, Australian rules football, uh, for, you, for those who don't. I haven't picked up already that I am Australian. Um, Aussie rules football is my favourite sport, so I've all, I'm always a bit annoyed that there isn't a genuine, um, what would you say, a AFL management type game. Now I know that there is. I won't get onto AFL management. Just I'll leave that for another video myself. While well, that, yeah, while I'm just rambling on here, we are. Um, a bit of background here, uh, this was a tricky uh, test to come up against the Bangladesh side. Um, I personally find Bangladesh really awkward to play because they, are, they aren't as easy beats as what many people probably think. As you can see there again, we do get a low score of 250 um, in our first innings, which is disappointing because we haven't been able to post big scores in our first innings pretty much the whole save um i don't know whether as i said that's down to mentality a mindset or is it something you can train to get your first innings totals better but uh, seemingly we are making big scores in our second innings which is probably what you want to do but saying that you don't want to be making too low scores and 250 is an okay score um probably on a south african wicket 250 is probably average But um, I ended up bringing Klassen back into the side. Uh, he was a... Um, we did play him, I think, in the Indian or the New Zealand game. Uh, as just, you probably saw, Ngidi got injured in the last um, test. So we are effectively down a quick. And in the, in the meantime, we have decided to play a extra batsman. Because when I looked at the wicket, it was quite good. And um, I had hoped that we were going to be bowling um, Bangladesh out very easily. But um, you will see here that, again, uh, Bangladesh have surprised me. And they are going to go on to make a decent score in their first innings. Um, a 300-run score. And... Shakib Al Hassan is on a way on his way to another or on his way to a hundred, <clears throat> but um, we are forced to bowl Alga because I had to, I ended up taking Maharaj out 
just because I wanted to give this batsman a go, um, Cody Chetty. And um, I don't know, I, I don't mind taking Maharaj out, especially if a wicket is catered towards swing bowling, which generally South African wickets are. Um, but I wouldn't do it every test. So just, yeah, don't expect that Maharaj is not going to be playing in the next series. Um, it was just that I wanted to <clears throat> sort of just give this batsman another go and I, our form is when we, when we do bowl another a fourth bowler or when we just have four bowlers isn't too bad. Um, but we do have to trail or we do have to somehow come back from this lead and Bangladesh though make it hard for us um we have a new guy here as well Stuart Owls um Zwello actually got hurt when I was simming the he got hurt in training so I had to pick this Stuart Owls guy um he was the second highest run scorer in domestic cricket for South Africa um but he he's okay. Um, we are looking for that partner with Milan. I don't want to put Alga there because I have trained Alga to be a number three now. So I am quite happy for him to stay at three. Um, Jack Snyman again. He is another player that is probably uh, got his spot locked down for the time being. Obviously De Kock has, but we are looking for a uh, a five and a six. Uh, whether that is in the form of another or like whether we because generally you have to look here um the cock would probably bat at six and so we are looking for a number five effectively and a number or a number two so we've already got our number one our number three and number four set um but yeah i am hoping though that ben bryson and uh Mulder can at least develop their batting a bit better um because Mulder I do like as an all-rounder, but saying that I wouldn't play him every test unless he's warranting selection. And there's sometimes wickets where you don't need extra bowlers. But uh, this guy Milan, though, he's been another fantastic find. Um, really showing his poise at the top of the order. I, I really can't see another batsman in the world that I can think of that has come in as an opener to average what he's averaging. And we do actually get a lead here. Um, this is actually our second innings. And we uh, we actually push on a bit here. I don't know what was up with Bangladesh. They were in a prime position. But they start to bowl pies, unfortunately, because we now have Jack Snyman in who is... Probably our informed batsman of the series, or basically this season. And we obviously have the number one ranked test player in the world in Jani Man or Jan Jane Man Milan, um, who is a fantastic, fantastic player. Uh, I really, I really am impressed with the performance that Milan is putting up. It, it, I've, I've just never seen an opener. That is so dominant as he is. And again, another second innings performance. Um, what, whatever it is, he always seems to perform big scores in second innings. That is another one, uh, 150 for Milan as well. I believe he has two double centuries. I may be wrong, but I know he has a, a really big double century. He does get out for 161. Um, but... We're pretty much just cruising here. We've still got a lot of wickets in hand. Um, we do have a 200 plus run lead. So um, this is going to be a big task for uh, for Bangladesh to come out and try and win this test. Um, but again, we've just been clinical throughout the uh, second innings. Whatever it, it has been, um, we have been clinical Ever since that Indian test series where it, we were pretty much bad for the first two tests. But then we came out and then we were really, really, um, we really deserved that win. So it is really good to see that our, our performance, um, we have sticked with a lot of 
young players as well. There has been chop and change, as you can see from the squad. But that is more just because I've been unimpressed with certain players or they've been injured. Um, but considering where the squad first started, if you go back and you watch that West Indies first test, it is really different. Like, you look at the squad here, there's probably, what, one, two, three, four, there's probably four ball, or four players in this 11 that played in that first test against the West Indies. And whether, as I said, this is going to be a rebuild, revamp, not a fully rebuild, but it will be a, um, a, a decent attempt at trying to remain competitive while also um, developing prospects. We do declare here, that is because we do have a lead of 400. Um, if it's a draw, it's a draw, but there's pretty much no way Bangladesh can win this test. But Rabada just comes in and he does clean up the first two or in the top three. And Pothis has been another decent player. He hasn't been fantastic, but uh, Pothis has been a promising player that we have found. Uh, he is also quite young as well, which is even better. So we can get a lot of games into him. But... You look here, they've basically got a session and a half to get 277. There's absolutely no way they are getting this total. And we should go on and we should win this test unless Bangladesh have decided that they are going to play in the last session and defend for their life. But um, yeah, I mean, Bangladesh, I was not expecting to... Um, have an easy series I was expecting to be really challenging and I think they should have their heads high Bangladesh I mean they probably put in a performance than what um than what you would probably expect uh it like they had a chance they pretty much had a chance to win both of these tests but whether that's due to player talent or whether like obviously um you know just being inconsistent they could not seem to pull this off and steal a victory here because that first test we should have had no way of winning that first test um to get 300 and what 30 in basically a day and a session uh was a fantastic effort and same with this one we we were pretty much um in a very awkward spot bangladesh did pass our total but you see there we do wrap up the test um that is that is it. That is the end of the second season. Um, the next video you will see, I will do a um, season review where we'll go through statistics. But 